Okay, Assalamualaikum, Sister Idayu. Can you hear me? Okay, sorry, sorry. All right. All right. Welcome, Salam. Yes, I can hear you. Alhamdulillah. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Alhamdulillah. We are good. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Where's the other student sister? Yeah, so we have uh, Daniel and Amir on board already. Okay. Daniel, okay, Amir. Okay. Right. Are you Amir? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. I'm fine, Dr. <laughs> good. Alhamdulillah. Brother Daniel, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. So we are waiting for Sister, <laughs> Sister Mandy. Sister Mandy, huh? Will she be joining us? Yes, follow up. Uh, let me find her. All right. So shall we start now? Thank you. Please, please. All right, Bismillah, Nama Rahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum Ramadan Mubarak, everyone, and Alhamdulillah, we have arrived in the 15th day of the beautiful month of Ramadan. Uh, may Allah give us the strength to carry out our ibadah in this difficult and unprecedented time. Amin, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Alamin. Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Mira Katiwi, and I'm from e-learning unit of Center for Professional Development. I will be the host for today's session, uh, which is titled uh, e-learning, shaping the future together. How we come up with this title, I do have discussed earlier with Sister Indayu on what would be the best topic. And Alhamdulillah, we came to this uh, very short and concise topic, which is, I think, uh, in the spirit of togetherness to uh, face this difficult time, inshallah. But before we start the session, I would like, first I would like to welcome our Honorable Rector, Professor Meritus Stanshi, that was Zulkifli Abdul Razak. Sorry, Prof. I'm nervous. <laughs> On behalf of CBD and all of us in this session, we would like to thank you very much for your time to be with us. Uh, country. Thank you. We really appreciate it. And I would also like to thank our panelists, our students, our brother and sister, our children um, from IIUM Student Union. Alhamdulillah, we have brother Amir, Amir Menzi. Uh, pre the president of ISU, Sister Ida Yumumtas, the vice president, brother Daniel, the yes. education officer, and Sister Mahren Fatima, uh, the assistant welfare and international officer. Okay, so thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for being here. Uh, every, and I, I would also like to thank all of the participants. We have more than 500 registered uh, participants. Um, unfortunately, we cannot accommodate all in the Zoom session, so uh, some will have to watch the session from YouTube. Uh, we are streaming the session live to YouTube, and um, I believe there are more that will be joining us soon. Okay, so if you feel that many will benefit, especially for the students, if you feel that uh, you would like to share the session to any of your colleagues, please do share the YouTube streaming address. Okay, so inshallah, as the title of the session today, we are trying to shape the future together, especially the future of learning when the two, when we uh, have the word electronic proceeds the learning, so the e-learning. Uh, I know there are many apprehension and concern from the students and lecturers throughout these two weeks. I identified there are uh, different or mixed feelings on how we're going to embark this e-learning journey. So I believe this would be a great Avenue to clarify and identify any issues related to e-learning as we will embark the mode soon. And before we start the discussion, I would like to request Anshu Rector to share his message to all of us, the community, which uh, I'm sure it will be very beneficial for us to start uh, the, the journey as well as the, uh, the discussion session today, inshallah. Uh, Anshu, the session is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mira. Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
let me first of all thank uh, Dr. Vera for inviting me uh, to be participating in your uh, session. Uh, I have heard about this session a number of times, but uh, I think uh, uh, it's an opportunity for me to address you directly one way or another. Because the topic of e-learning has popped up many times in our discussion, uh, at least at the university level, in trying to decide uh, what do we do uh, with uh, learning per se, uh, let alone uh, e-learning, given the circumstances we are in. Okay? Uh, the university, to be honest, is very concerned about uh, the kind of education that we are getting into with the, dis with the disruption that is almost unprecedented. Unpresent we didn't anticipate this, at least at the, uh, the level that it is uh, happening now. And therefore, we are kind of, quote unquote, not prepared as well uh, to deal with it in a more, in a more precise and more precise way. Uh, nevertheless, uh, given that circumstances, I think there are many people who kind of, for my mind, uh, jump into the bandwagon and say we can solve this problem. Uh, just, just using e-learning, online learning, or all the other words uh, that use virtual learning as it were uh, to solve the problem. I, I have my own reservation. Uh, and my own reservation is basically whether the learning that is done through electronic medium uh, will serve the purpose of uh, conveying the kind of quality of education that we need. I, I, I take it that we will be communicating with you. Uh, giving you information, uh, communicating with you. But communicating and giving information alone is not education from my point of view, not even learning from my point of view. So we may be addressing the wrong uh, method for the wrong purpose, and therefore you know, not giving you what you're supposed to give, or what you're supposed to, to, to get uh, from, from education. So that was the discussion we had. Uh, but unfortunately, Many universities, when they meet the ministry, they say we are ready for online learning, we are ready for e-learning, and therefore, you know, they dismiss all other alternatives like face-to-face uh, -face learning uh, because of the, uh, the, the, the distancing and stuff like that. So we are left with very small uh, opportunity in trying, in trying to make this good. So uh, I want to just uh, have your impression, and I will give you my impression. Uh, why we take certain position and why we are not taking other position as such. Yeah. So uh, I'm not an, I'm not a specialist in this, but from the little that I read, uh, of course there are uh, advantages uh, as far as e-learning, virtual learning, whatever you call it, is concerned. But there is also a downside to it, and I think the downside has not been discussed uh, very much. Yeah. Uh, if I can go back to just the definition of what learning is, to be very to be very. Uh, putting a cursory about it, uh, I refer to the UNESCO sort of four pillars of learning. In 1996, uh, UNESCO did a commission on what will be learning be in the year 20 in the year 20 uh, in the year in the in the 21st century. Yeah, what will the learning be like? And they produce a report, uh, and the report uh, come up with this concept of the four pillars of learning. And the four pillars of learning, as far as UNESCO is concerned, uh, has four things. One is, they say, the learning to know. Yeah? Uh, learning to know means you are given the set of knowledge, the cognitive knowledge, and you are given uh, the set of information uh, to make you more aware uh, of what the subject is all about, uh, its context and how relevant it is from the uh, educational point of view. So uh, I think we have been doing that. I mean, your lectures is about learning to know. When your, when your lecturers and your professors give you uh, certain information, and that information is for you to know, uh, certainly knowing is a power, and then you can make uh, some decision, and you can make some you know, a deduction from the, the information you have. And that's why the more information you get, uh, the more interaction you have, uh, the more powerful you are in the sense of making more decision, making a lot more alternatives and so on and so forth. So that I think is, is, is not a problem. Uh, you can do that by now, I think it's basically part of learning to know and you are getting some information and if there is a feedback, I think it's even better. The second part is the one that concerns me. After learning to know, then it says learning to do. So from the information you get, you must be able to do something about it, you know. Uh, 
uh, if you've got this information and you're not doing something about it, or you can't do anything with that information, then that part of learning is not complete. So you have to know and then you have to do. And that do, I think, again, uh, is another uh, realm that we need to be uh, concerned about. Because when you talk about doing, we're talking about real life experience. For example, if you want to talk about planting a tree, uh, there must be the actual process of planting a tree. And that, to my mind, cannot be done virtually. You know, of course, you can, you can demonstrate it uh, virtually and how to plant a tree. But at the end of the day, I think you need to go down to the business of planting a tree in order to see a tree grow uh, virtually that way. And uh, this is where I think the concept is when we talk about uh, the, the virtual learning, the e-learning and such, whether that could be done or whether that is satisfactory. Okay, so to a certain level, maybe it is uh, satisfactory. But as you go down into year three, year four, as you increase in the, in the progress of learning, uh, certainly you need to have something which is more uh, realistic in that particular sense. And this is where I think my, my question mark would be. So, for example, here when we, when we discuss, we talk about uh, the Kulia of medicine, all right? Uh, maybe year one, you can demonstrate it by using uh, what we call a virtual sort of experimentation. But at the end of the day, you need to go and do it yourself. Uh, and you cannot do that virtually anymore. If you do that virtually, then it may not be to the level of satisfaction or the quality uh, that we expect from learning from learning to know. I'll give you just my, my cursory uh, experience when I was in the previous university, uh, USM. Yeah? USM, maybe what, what, what was it, 10 years ago? Yeah, about 10 years ago, uh, when the School of Medicine uh, were uh, oversubscribed by students who want to go to our School of Medicine. Um, then uh, we need to decide whether we want to take the students or not. So the idea is some of these are good students. I say we're going to take the students, but we're not going to accommodate it in USM. We're going to open another a campus in India. Uh, so we open a, camp, a branch campus in India, a place near Belgium, which is near Bangalore. Uh, for two reasons. One is, of course, the cost of living in India is cheap. So students can afford uh, to stay in India rather than in other places. But the second reason was because in India, they still use a uh, human cadaver. In other words, for the medical school, they are still allowed to use human cadaver, whereas in USM, this is not already the way to do it because they say it's expensive and all other things. So they're using technology, they're using plastic models and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, so we started the school and 10 years, 10 years later, I, I just visited the school uh, last year when they have their 10th anniversary. Now, most students want to go to India as compared to USM. Although when we started, we reversed it. First choice, USM, second choice, India. Now the first choice is India, second choice is USM. And I asked them why, and he says, we are, we, are, we, are, we are able to deal with the human caliber. In fact, there are so many people dying in India that they can choose which uh, corpse they want uh, for their own study. Now, why? Because they say we can really feel what is it like when you dissect uh, the corpse, you are really dissecting a human being, which they will be doing when they are, when, when, when they are uh, what do you call, uh, what do you think? Uh, practicing, right? As no longer using uh, artificial materials and so on and so forth. So that issue, I think, becomes a very important issue for me in, in trying to decide what is best for, for the student. Uh, in that particular context. So the learning to do is, uh, is, is a part that raises uh, a question mark uh, as far as I'm concerned. Then the third element as far as UNESCO is, is, is learning to be. Learning to be is about what I talked about uh, this morning about knowing yourself. Uh, how do you, you know yourself as a human person? And, and this again cannot be done virtually because you need another person uh, to interact with, you know? Uh, you could interact virtually, but there are certain things which is almost intimate in the question, in the question of knowing yourself. That you cannot do this electronically. I mean, there are emotions involved. People sometimes, you know, uh, cry. People sometimes express themselves. They want to hug each other, and all these things cannot be done electronically. Cannot be done artificially. You still need to have this face-to-face -face interaction 
between uh, between two human beings, as it were, before you really know yourself. I mean, imagine if you want to know yourself, or you want to talk to a, a person, uh, and you need to you know, physically sometimes touch them, uh, and, and that is part of the, and part of the learning, the experiential learning as such. Yeah? And the last one I think was even is even more it's worse it's even worse. It's, it's called learning to live together, right? Uh, when you want to live together again, I think it has to be a, a physical experience of learning together, not just virtual experience of learning together. So this is where I think when, the, when I look at the four elements and I say whether e-learning is a suitable medium for this, uh, my, my own hesitation is it is not. So we need to come to a terms where, uh, where it is appropriate to do e-learning, and when it is not appropriate, and then try to use other medium, but today we call this blended, the blended learning, uh, the physical, the, the real, as compared to the virtual and, 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 the, and the artificial as such. Yeah? Uh, I, 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 am quite, uh, I am quite convinced about this because sometimes I just give an experience. If you, if you want to be a footballer, and maybe as an easy example, you can read as many books as you want about how to play football. But until you go down and start kicking the ball, you know, and how to score goals, uh, you will never be a good fo footballer. Maybe you can, can never be a, a footballer at all when you don't even know how to handle the ball uh, with your feet. Then you will never be able to be a good footballer, let alone uh, Afini, uh, become champions and stuff like that. So that is a limitation that I see in our context. Uh, when we talk just about e-learning and not uh, learning in the way that it should, it should be done. The issue that I, 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 I think that people are, are saying this is not possible because when they talk about face-to-face -face learning on a non-virtual type, they are still going to the old fashion of uh, sitting in a, in a classroom the way it is organized today. In other words, you sit on a theater, a theater style, you know, very close to one another, uh, and this has been a critic for a long time. Uh, the data style sort of arrangement in the classroom uh, to many people is not a 21st century uh, classroom as it were. Uh, some of the 21st classroom, 21st century classroom do not have even seats the way we see it today. Yeah, the kind of arrangement, they have various other uh, sort of furnitures rather than chairs, they have got bean bags, uh, they have mattresses, they have pillows, that it is a very open sort of a system that you pick and choose how you want to be comfortable in learning rather than just sitting in a place looking in front uh, at a one person uh, trying to teach you uh, whereas you know all the other uh, environments around you is, is as though it is not important. So. If we start changing the idea of what face-to-face -face learning is all about, then I think we we'll probably be a little bit more sympathetic in trying to have a face-to-face -face learning with different sort of an arrangement rather than this very uh, stereotype uh, kind of an arrangement. I think we need to come to that terms when you talk about 21st century learning, not just the medium, but also the way the classroom is organized, you know, uh, the way it is done, uh, even to the, extent, to the extent that should there be a curriculum, should there be a rigid curriculum, all these are the discussions that we're going to go into in the real quote-unquote 21st century classroom or 21st century learning as such. Okay? So in conclusion, uh, I, I think learning itself has got its own uh, understanding of what it is, whether it's electronic or not, it's just a medium. So we can probably discuss what is the medium best for certain uh, certain uh, environment, uh, certain situation, certain cases. Uh, but generally, I think it has to be a, a mixed kind of uh, uh, interaction between face to face and perhaps uh, the what you call the, uh, the, the virtual the virtual way with the virtual learning. Uh, for this university, for example, when we are enhancing this whole idea of community engagement, uh, I cannot imagine that you do not have the skill to engage a community. Only by electronic media, uh, it will not work. Kampong Sungai Pusu alone perhaps do not have an internet. 
uh, you will never be able to engage them, even though you know they, this is limitation uh, with this virtual thinking. So all this thing, I think, needs to be, needs to be taken into consideration. Yeah. For example, again, when you talk with the orang asli, you want to go into deep in the in, in the jungle uh, and experience the the the, 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 the nature as such. Yeah. Uh, again, these are the limitations that I think. Uh, we need to be uh, mindful of uh, if you really want uh, a discussion. But the last point is what, again, UNESCO says, an education is given in a way, it has to be, first of all, fair. It has to be equitable. It has to have a quality. Now, again, in our situation, when the connectivity is not certain, all right, uh, when equipments are not you know, uh, available at certain points, and so the question of fairness, the question of equitability, and hence affecting the quality of education. Yeah? Uh, and it is not just Malaysia. I was communicating with my friend in, 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 in Toronto. I say, uh, how do you organize this? He said, look, even in Toronto, a very urban uh, city uh, in North America, are still having problems of this nature. So we are not talking just about Malaysia or developing countries, even in urban uh, developed countries where the distributions are not well done, they are still having problems of uh, so-called equitability, and fairness, accessibility, and hence quality. What happens normally is people who do not have this are people from the disadvantaged background. Already they are disadvantaged and then they are piled up with these other challenges. So they are never able to, you know, uh, kind of participate in major discussions because they are always left behind this quote no one is left behind becomes just a cliche that we say no one's left behind but hey there are many people who have been left behind but actually nobody actually speaks for them so we want this university to be more responsible and more accountable in that sense uh, while we go for the best and solution what is the best will then depend on the situation we are facing today right so immediately for us now if we were to start uh, this semester we are planning to start maybe middle of June. Uh, we are now need to assess how many of our students who are not coming back uh, have or do not have whatever it takes to do e-learning, right? Uh, if they do not have, then our suggestion is to invite them back so that there are better opportunities here, there are better facilities here, so that then they can participate at least in equal terms uh, to 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 narrow the disparity between the people who are lucky and people who are not who are not so lucky in that particular sense yeah so i will stop there uh, maybe if there's anything that you want to ask i'm prepared to sort of engage you with this so thank you very much okay thank you so much thank you very much Tantri. and um just want to recap very important point that Tantri have shared just now especially uh when we end up learning be that e or without e uh, the, the main missions of our role here as a lecturer and as a student is to make sure that the learning process happen, the learning process to know, to do, to be, and to live together. Okay. Um, and another three points that we have to ensure that place in the learning process is the fairness, the equitability, and the quality. So on, on that point alone, I'm sure there are different uh, opinion or different concern from the students that perhaps you would want to share uh, shall we start with Amir first uh, or Daniel? Okay, so which one would want to start first? Daniel, perhaps you have some findings you would want to share with us first? Because I know uh, ISU have run a number of surveys, right? So perhaps you would want to share the findings? Uh, I think Idayu, you may start first. Okay, sure. <laughs> All right, sister, go ahead. Okay. okay. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Thank you again for having us uh, to be part of this discussion. So when we have had our service previously and when we engage with our Kulia Best Societies community, we also realize and come to learn that online learning is not just simply about bringing our education and learning online, but also there are some other methods just now, as Tansi mentioned about fairness, so we want to make internet access uh, something that is possible for everyone as well as more affordable 
because we have students who are currently struggling to even pay for basic food. So what mm -hmm. else to pay for their data or Wi-Fi? Because they're not staying at campus. So hopefully you can bring, bring the students back on campus if that's the case. But also in terms of uh, preparation and resourcing our lecturers and students, because one of the recurring complaints from students is that they're struggling to focus when they're studying alone uh, in front facing a screen for example Th so there are many distractions uh, distractions as well as now I i'm not at home uh, but i can relate that sometimes when we're at home there would be distractions perhaps from the family members or the environment and we have quite different environments that we have to take into account and how do we move forward with perhaps the skill literacy among our uh, lecturers and students, as well as to culturally accept this new way of doing it. And last but not least would be um, the content of how it is being delivered. Uh, one of the concerns being that, for example, if before this, we have the convenience to follow our classes physically from 8.30 till afternoon, for example, but now that we have sort of, it, it, it requires some sort of flexibility or uh, because a few days ago, we have had this discussion with some students saying that, all right, so some lectures be saying, you have to show up at this time, everyone check their internet, we'll uh, sit for two hours. But and then another lecturer suggested that I'm going to prepare two hours of materials and you have to watch it. Uh, if you're able to answer some quizzes, meaning you have watched it. So that's a way to make them accountable. Uh, at the same time, about the assessment. So is it time already for us to make attendance not compulsory? So these are the questions that we have to address. Uh, how do we trust the students enough to make their learning? I remember uh, our dean from Korea Fire KHS said that it's time for students to be proactive. Uh, not only waiting to be forced to follow the classes, but to be curious to do extra reading, for example. So it's not just about shifting our tools on how we want to follow our learning, but also to change that culture. I think it requires some sort of understanding and education among our community. And that would be a role between the authority and the students, especially the student leaders, to create this new narrative as we want to follow e-learning. Thank you, thank you, Sir Davis. So a very important point, which I, I really expect to come from you actually on the challenges. I identify that through our survey, uh, we've carried out a survey, which I think you, one of the respondents on the e-learning readiness uh, among the students as well as among the staff. So yes, we have identified many challenges and you point out, uh, was spot on, you point out very, uh, precisely the challenges in terms of environment. So uh, many of our students is currently, many of our brothers and sisters is currently at home. So they have a different uh, situations, they have a different uh, commitment. So yeah. uh, to force uh, some of those stay in front of PC for two hours may not be a uh, good idea. And this is what actually we have been highlighting throughout the e-learning clinic, which I have shared with you. Yes. Um, it is, it has, uh, these two weeks has been very intensive training. Um, I have highlighted the times here from 10.30 up until 11.30 at some session, 12, some session. We really encourage the lecturer to sort of see how the material should be delivered. And uh, you have highlighted a very important point, which I think now we sort of validated the concern from a uh, pedagogical perspective as well as uh, from the student's perspective. All right. And also, uh, I also would like to thank you for highlighting the learning culture. It is about time for us to shift the mindset of um, carrot and stick. So it's, uh, we should look for carrot now. Without even without the stick around, okay. So uh, I hope this will be something that perhaps can be uh, simulated, I mean, simulated, stimulated among the students as well. What I want to share with all of you is that uh, this two weeks, basically, we also gathered a lot of resources mm -hmm. among the lecturers. Uh, so 
Um, I'm very honored and privileged thanks to, to, to highlight that uh, we have more than 20 lecturers uh, crowdsource the knowledge. Um, so we donated what we have. We form it in to be that videos or lecture notes uh, on guiding our colleagues to how properly implement that or create the content for e-learning because as you mentioned earlier, it is going to be a different kind of nature. So perhaps we can also encourage such nature among the students as well where you actually help each other because you would know best what would be the kind of challenges that you would have among students. On having that, having that say, uh, we, we also from e-learning unit would be more than happy to assist. Okay? If there's any kind of sessions that you would want to have among the students and giving some kind of ideas on how you do certain tools. Uh, what I highlight, what I have identified from the survey is that you also need some trainings on how to uh, manage time. Uh, so the students, a number of students actually highlighted how to manage time when we actually but on e learning so these are some other things that yeah if i can add a little bit um i yeah. think i i feel very uh i relate it so much to learning to do because it's not just previously we only uh we among students we say that uh Korea of in de de dentistry for example or accountancy they have to do a lot of hands-on or more practical things but coming from religious background studies we also learned that because previously we would go to the uh, places where we engage with the community and we learn how they are living so mm -hmm. perhaps we can find to, ways to make room for creativity how can we actually learn to do things from where we are. For example, I might be living somewhere outside campus. So how can the assessment or the past being given by the lecturers require me to engage with my community? We will practice social distancing, but at least get us to do something that's like beyond uh, just facing the screen or something that's electronic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so let's hear from Tansu. Do you want to add? Anything? Yeah, I, I think I think uh, Idai has brought up a, a number of in, interesting points. Uh, again, I think uh, if you example, for example, to me, uh, learning is uh, is not just about the end point. I mean, all everybody talks about exams. Uh, mm -hmm. As though an exam is the end point of, of of everything else. As though the process of learning is not important. Uh, mm -hmm. I I make I make a I make a difference between. It really depends on the process. If the process is good, then the endpoint is good. If the process is not good, then the endpoint certainly you cannot expect it to be good. This is where we are. We are in the situation now. I think the process has been disrupted almost uh, to you know uh, to an extent that the, if you have if you have an exam now, it doesn't mean much. Yeah. Because you I don't know what you're assessing. Maybe yeah. you're assessing something that you remember, uh, yes. and that's about it. You know, the process has been disrupted. Uh, all, all, all along the line, that it does not mean much if you just talk about an exam. So exams in that particular sense to me do not mean uh, much at all. So we may want to talk about now just the, the process of what is the process, how do you evaluate the process uh, given the situation and, and, and the circumstances. I mean, coming back to my analogy of planting a tree, right? Uh, you may want to assess now how well does the tree grow? Mm -hmm. uh, in that particular context, whether you actually has nurtured the tree and stuff like that. So we need to start to break down education uh, in its bits uh, to give it more meaning rather than just go to the end and say, oh, this is, this is what examination is all about. And I see the, the, the fallacy of that. You know? uh, many people, even my, even my, my own uh, classmates, they probably get the first class honours but in terms of knowledge translation, they are not there. They are probably not as good a doctor as a person who is second class upper, for example. You know? So there is this idea of looking at education in a more fine-tuned way rather than just going to the end point, uh, thinking that is the submission of what education is yeah. all about. Right? The yes. other point I think that, that you also raised is basically uh, in the context of education, at least from the Islamic point of view, from my little knowledge, when you learn the knowledge from a lecturer, professor, it's not just his or her knowledge, it's also his or her personality. You know, uh, this way in, in, in our language, you use the word menuntut. 
uh, it's not belajar, it's not uh, uh, pendidikan menuntut. I mean, you you actually try to get as much as possible from his brain and his heart, his personality. Uh, that there is a bonding between you and your teacher. Yes. Uh, often, you know, you don't you don't uh, uh, you don't discard your teacher the way we discard our teachers now. Uh, they are part and parcel of your life. When the, your, your teacher died, you still go and visit their grave, you read du'a for them, you know, uh, as though they are part of your life. That bonding is a lifelong bonding. And I worry when you talk about this electronic thing, that kind of a bonding do not take place. I can switch it off, and I, I don't want you, I switch it off, and that's it. You know, yeah. there, goes, there, there goes the bonding as well. Yeah. So these are, these are meaningful processes of education that we have not talked about. We are talking about the very convenience of education. And even then, I think that there, there, there are issues. I, I remember reading a report uh, recently from NUS when they do uh, what you call uh, examination using online. I think a high number of them uh, practices plagiarism. Mm. So again, and that shows that the education that we are imparting is not an ethical. You just want to, you know, you just want to pass the exam. Whether the means to the end uh, does not concern you at all. And as as we make this a lot more easier uh, in using this kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, medium. Uh, then I think we are, we are not imparting the, the, the value of knowledge uh, as it is worth. So when, when, you, when you are in, in a workplace, you then will cut corners because that is how you gain your degrees anyway. So these are the intricate things that people do not, people do not discuss, that people do not pay attention to because they look at knowledge gathering as something which is just the bundle of things rather than looking at in, in, in the pieces that, that we've talked about. So we, we, we want to know from you uh, in the sense of what is that, that that you think education is all about. It's just, get, it's just about getting a degree and getting a job and I think education is complete uh, or is something deeper than that, particularly in an Islamic university. And an Islamic university, I think there must be a differentiation between what sort of knowledge acquisition we have as compared to another quote-unquote uh, non-Islamic uh, or a secular, I say, we need to differentiate it. I think that's our, our task, at least that's my task. Uh, I want to differentiate IUM from my own university, uh, USM. You know, yes. USM, we don't talk about this, but that value base is not there. The value base is quite, is, is quite different. Here, yeah. the value base is quite different at the same time. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Sansri. So I hope that... Uh, Cover some of the concerns that you uh, have earlier, sister. Do you want to clarify on some points? Is that? Yeah, I think that is. Yeah. All right. Let, let me hear something from Daniel because I have read quite a number of statements from students. So, would you want to share your findings, Daniel? Okay. I'm trying to unmute you. Okay. Go ahead. Hello. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mira, and uh, Assalamualaikum, uh, everyone. Uh, so let um, me introduce myself. My name is Daniel, and I'm from Office of Education, RIUM Student Union. Um, uh, from RIUM Student Union, uh, we are happy to uh, say that, that actually our uh, effort on enhancing and empowering the process of education, especially on online learning, uh, really requires and uh, demands collaborative efforts uh, from administrations, lecturers, and also, of course, the students. So that's why we from IUM Student Union, if I'm not mistaken, last week, uh, was coming out with uh, an initiative to produce an open letter that received uh, a hit uh, in Twitter and our uh, other social medias, uh, including uh, 400 retweets uh, from our uh, students and 400 likes from our IUM community also. So under this um, open letter, that uh, it might be, uh, it might reach uh, our lecturers and it might not, but uh, let me uh, give you some uh, heads up from our um, request uh, in the uh, open letter in which uh, we uh, propose uh, 
four uh, requests uh, to the uh, IUM administrations uh, to consider in order to enhance and in order to ensure that the emergency remote teaching and learning really fulfills and meet the students' academic welfare. So these four important elements are, the first one is internet access, second one is on the mental health, third one is on the kuliah's need, that is, we know every kuliah needs uh, different requirements and different um, uh, specializations. So uh, their needs is very unique. And the last one is training for our students and lecturers. Um, many of, uh, quite many of the students uh, thought that uh, our open letter is actually sort of like a fighting between uh, administration and also the IIM Student Union, but actually it is not. We are openly to work closely uh, together with the IUM administration in order to enhance that this um, effect of um, implementing ERTL policy uh, really meets the students' academic welfare. Um, and also, I would like to uh, share that uh, previously in uh, late March, we have conducted uh, one survey that received around uh, 4,000 4, plus uh, students' responses that is equivalent to a whole population of RKHS students. And uh, we did a study about uh, the uh, students' experience facing MCO extension. And if I may share with you some heads up from the survey, that is 35% from the students have low confidence on teaching abilities of their lecturers when using online methods and 43.3 abilities in the same online manners. At least 38.2% find their available internet connections unreliable for online learning, and of 78.8 .8 respondents who intend to use mobile data in case of online learning, 46%, which is half of them, subscribe to less than two gig of internet monthly plan. So that's why we come up with this uh, request that we would like admins to consider. And uh, I want to share uh, with you also that we know that this process of online learning really needs a way forward. And it, it, it demands uh, several important factors such as access, literacy, training, and materials. So the question is uh, how far we are ready for this process? Because uh, students are having and facing different circumstances. They are not leisuring at homes. Some of them really face uh, difficulties and hardships in which we from IIM Student Union we received several reports uh, and also heads up from our students in the social media in which they really face uh, some difficulties in terms of internet access, uh, in terms of their mental health conditions and on, in terms of their own weariness on how this um, ERTL policy or emergency remote teaching and learning really uh, fulfill their academic welfare. Um, and I want to share that uh, this uh, evening also, we will uh, spread another survey, like it is a centralized survey um, uh, made by the Office of Education, uh, IUM Student Union, in collaboration with other representatives from Kuliah Bay Societies from all our IUM campuses, in which in this survey we want to study the readiness of the students and also the effectiveness uh, of the ERTL policy in meeting. Uh, the academic welfare uh, of the students. So uh, from this survey, we will later on produce uh, a report uh, from the findings of the survey, and we will share the findings from the survey uh, to the related and relevant uh, IOM offices, and I'm not forgetting the dinners also, because uh, we want to make sure that from IOM Student Union, really bringing up the students' voices and opinions considering that different circumstances that they are facing right now. And we want and we are happy uh, to collaborate with the uh, IOM management, including uh, academic officers and also the nearest uh, in terms of enhancing uh, the purpose of the ERTL policy in meeting the students' academic welfare. So uh, that is some uh, heads up from the Office of Education, IIM Student Union. Uh, please, uh, Dr. Mira. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Dania. Okay, so I have read those uh, requests. I'm not going to say demand, yeah? I'm, uh, I'm going to call it requests. Yeah? And in fact, Dania, just to share with all of you, uh, Amir, Idayu, Dania, 
uh, for the internet issue, actually it has been addressed at the ministry level uh, because I'm part of MEPTA, it has been addressed at the ministry level, it has been discussed with a number of telco. Uh, we are just waiting for a uh, certain kind of uh, initiative to be finalized, okay? So I can, I can share with you on that. Uh, on the mental health, perhaps Sanjay would want to share uh, the initiative that you mentioned. Yeah. I, I think uh, there are a number of concerns here. I think about this middle of June, end of June. I will, you remind me, I will, I, will, I will come back to that. Yeah, But mental health has been from day one. Uh, from day one, as we think mental health is an issue. In fact, I think among all universities, we are the only one that systematically been tracking the mental health status of our students. We mobilize the uh, counseling unit, we, mo we mobilize the counselors, we mobilize uh, also the psychiatric units from, from one time. Because I had a feeling then, the moment the students are uh, locked up, uh, they will have this uneasiness of uh, trying to adjust. Yeah? Maybe one week they could do it, maybe two weeks they can still handle it, but when it comes to a, to a month, two months, I think you know uh, it, the, the, the stress can get uh, even higher as it go along. So, We've been tracking it, and alhamdulillah, I think we are able to convince. Uh, I am sure that part of the reason why the ministry wants to send the student back was because of our data. We showed them the data that there is a rising trend of students uh, facing quote-unquote mental health situation. And we corroborate this data not only from ours, but also from befrienders. You know, or they may say, well, UIA students are, you know, are softies and they cannot manage this. Uh, but we look at the independent data outside, and defenders also show 13% uh, increase at that particular time, two weeks or three weeks uh, after being after being locked down. There, yeah? and I, I was just telling uh, recently there was an interview in CNN when the professor of psychiatry talks about in, in Columbia University 900% increase in terms of mental health concern. So it is it is a big concern that if you just talk about education per se, and not the environment as the guy you were saying, then I think you miss this point. You know, uh, you don't really care whether the students are really there, uh, ready to study because their mental makeup is not there. And worse, I think it will go into sometimes a very harmful way of solving this problem. So that mental health, I think we, we, we've caught it, but the, that is not uh, the end of it all, because it also says to us that our system is not a complete system. When I ask them, when the students come into this campus, well, you, you take all the blood pressure and all the things else, but do you also uh, interrogate mental health? We have done, we have not done. Right? So, meaning that the next intake, we'll begin to institute this. Hopefully, by then, there is a kind of an app or whatever it is uh, that we can do this in, on a more, you know, institutional comprehensive basis that we can get this information to be fit back into our system so that we know how to handle students when they when they are in the mahala themselves. And the, and the mahala is another environment that I've not ventured it, but I can imagine what it is all about. You know? So we, we want to we want to make this quote unquote university into a kind of a very comprehensive ecosystem on education. The, as, as much as environment rather than just the person itself. Sometimes the environment impinges on the person. I think that's, that needs to be taken into account. I think that's a new learning curve for me. You know, how do you actually uh, begin to, to integrate this together? But I just got one question for you. Uh, when you talk about this coronavirus, talk of the least is cleanliness. Talk of the least is hygiene. Talk of the least is sanitation, all right? Now, at what point do, we, do you learn about this? I'm sure you have learned about this. Uh, there's learning to know. Uh, at what point do you translate this into practice? Because until and unless that becomes part of the education system, you may be you know, knowing physics, chemistry, but your, your hygiene is not there. And I think in this context, your hygiene is not there, that edu the education system is still not complete. And this is across the board. It's not just for cooler engineering, they can be clean, and the other cooler can be dirty, it's okay. No, 
that everybody must be clean and the cleanliness must be at par with each other so that you know we can we can make sure that whatever challenges we have as far as the coronavirus is concerned we can do it together now those those kind of things i mean hygiene uh, i don't know whether we want to have exams at the end of the day we don't want to have exams at the end of the day but as i mentioned the process must be there how do you integrate this into your education system how do you make part and parcel of that learning that hygiene is also there at the same time, although it is not examinable, although it's not part of the curriculum, but it is mandatory as part of education given the circumstances we are in. How do you handle it? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to, uh, to, to sense yeah, uh, that the education system is not only the Pulia, but also the Mahala at the same time. Because you live much of your life in the Mahala. Uh, all your, you know, you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you whatever is the mahala. But is mahala quote unquote able to train this or to give this training to you as part and parcel of the education? And that is the other question that is in my head at the moment in time. How do you institute this as part of education uh, in, in our area? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much, Sanjay. That's a very important point. But I think what is what have been left off from a lot of discussion, Sanjay, uh, mental health on the lecture. <laughs> I'm not sure whether anybody actually have that concern. But a lot of issues that have been coming to my office is that many are worried, Sanjay, especially when we are embarking in learning. Some students will actually take uh, the mistake of anything that happens online or any notes that are posted online and it becomes viral. <laughs> uh. So this is this I think we have to again uh, work together to, in, to improve the awareness on uh, uh, I think they know that better. Uh, the adapt in learning, the, the how we actually carry out ourselves in learning. So perhaps I may would want to share what Students, uh, IAM Students Union would have uh, have in place on ensuring those kind of things. Uh, the idea in online learning is uh, properly implemented in among students. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All right, my name is Amin Azim. Just to introduce, my name is Amin Azim Karukin. I'm the president of IAM Student Union. All right, uh, so what I uh, for. Uh, first, what IIUM Student Union have been have in place for the e-learning is uh, around last two weeks, if I'm not mistaken, IIUM Student Union have established IIUM Student Union Academic Council under the uh, Education Office, where this office uh, will manage all the um, education-related matters. Uh, in this council, the members is uh, of uh, of course the Education Officers and also representative from all kuliah based societies uh, in Gomba uh, and rapid, uh, and also by case uh, uh, on by case basis which is uh, involving the pago and kuantan as well so this council will be the one who in charge on the academic affairs uh, that uh, which uh, uh, at university level lah. so any issues such as this e learning has, uh, will be discussed uh, thoroughly in this council, right? So uh, for me, uh, uh, for those adapt things is uh, for e-learning. I think uh, uh, as of now, uh, still in stud uh, in discussion in this in this council for it to be uh, implemented and to be um, what we call um, educated to all the students and stuff lah. Okay, uh, uh, I'm a bit, uh, which is, uh, for the students of IAM's point of view has been uh, covered by Idayu and also Ikadenia, uh, which is one of my, uh, I've been another part of my concern, which is uh, uh, relating to uh, what I've been uh, discussing with other universities, MPPs or SRCs, which is uh, one of them, uh, some universities initiative, which is uh, collaboration with telecommunication uh, providers such as Cellcom uh, and YTL for giving uh, uh, giving free SIM cards and also some of them also receive free smartphones to help them in e-learning uh, process. But my concern on this is that um, 
we can give them free smartphone. We can give them free SIM cards with uh, unlimited internet access. But the problem mm. is when the area of for the student is uh, uh, does not have any internet connections. I have uh, one. I have experienced once uh, one of my, uh, some of my members which uh, uh, live in uh, not in urban areas. Uh, they uh, uh, I've been contacting with uh, them, which, uh, but they only reply around a week after I, I, I'm messaging them. So and then I ask them why I, uh, after one week that uh, you replied the message. They said that they have no internet connections at their home. So this is one of the problems that we can give them a uh, uh, SIM card with uh, unlimited data, but then if they doesn't, uh, the area doesn't have any internet connections, uh, any um, 3G or 4G uh, connection, so it's still, uh, you can say a bit useless lah, giving them the SIM card, uh, uh, giving them those free uh, internet uh, data. So that's uh, one. And also some of the universities also differentiate uh, the students who uh, have good access into internet and have uh, not so good access in internet for classes, which is one class, there's like two different groups, which is those who can uh, have good internet connection that will have a live session like we do right now. And those who have internet connection will only uh, watch pre-recorded recorded video so uh, in terms of fairness not that fair lah for the students who what uh, who need to only uh, uh, watch a pre-recorded so it's hard for them to ask question on the spot to the lecturers so that's of some of the question from what I've um, uh, ask my fellow colleague in MPP case, uh, the national level for MPPs, right? So uh, for me, uh, uh, I'm agreeing with uh, what uh, initiative, uh, what uh, has been suggested by our trans director, which is we will try to allow the students to come back to the university uh, uh, with uh, uh, only for those who are with special cases such as poor internet connections B40 students. So uh, uh, the mechanism on detecting or this, deciding those students, uh, how we are going to do it, which is uh, how we are going to decide these students are really in need in uh, the facilities in IUM. Okay. So how we are going to decide on these students. Lah. Uh, and also one more things that I will, uh, would like to raise here is that um, if those students uh, decide to do online learning from home, can they at least come back to the university to take all their, such as textbooks, uh, even some of my colleagues left their computers in IUM, but they are capable to do online learning from home. Can they enter IUM just to take all those belongings? Uh, for them to proceed with yes. e-learning, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> for e-learning, uh, I agree that e-learning is the way forward to do uh, in mm -hmm. order to continue our education system, lah. Right. Thank you so much, Brother Amir. Actually, your point is exactly the same point as what we've discussed two days ago, Tantri. Yeah. In a very detail, the very exact point. So perhaps Tantri would want to share yeah. what we've decided. Well, let, let me just summarize what the university has decided so far given all the feedback and some we have repeated today. Yeah? Uh, first of all, when we, when we initially said we want to start in the semester on the 1st of June, that was uh, the, the time when we do not anticipate that there will be a, a third and a fourth MCO. We thought after the first MCO, which probably at the end of, uh, that was at the end of early, early April. Mid-April. Yeah, mid-April. Uh, by then, we thought everything is over, then you know, you, you all can do whatever that needs to be done. And we thought from April, they have May, and then I think there's a two month gap as it were. Then June will be just a nice time uh, for us to, to, to recover and come back as it were. But that's not what's happening, uh, it goes on. So, until, until such that uh, if you were to stick on the 1st of June, then it will be unfair for you. Let me, let me clarify why it's unfair. 
For example, the students that go to Sabah and Sarawak, they have to be quarantined for another 40 days. By the time they finish their quarantine, that will be maybe on the 20th of March or around that time. It's three more days or four more days to Heraya. All right? And then if you say you need to report to the university on the 29th of March, so that we can, uh, 29th of May, so that we can start on the 1st of June, to me that's grossly unfair. And that's why we are, we are prepared to push for another two more weeks until the mid of, uh, mid of June, so that the students have, you know, leeways, uh, as, I, as much as I talk about living together, uh, learning how to live together, they also need to have that with their parents and families during that particular occasion. That's the only reason why we are prepared to push until the, the middle of June. Yeah? But certain kuliah medicine, for example, they say, no, we're going to start in the first week of June, and they have already uh, informed the students, then they can start. I mean, basically, they, you think you're ready, your students are ready to start on the 1st of June, we will not say no. But you have to take that responsibility. You have to make sure that when you say you're ready to start, your students are ready to start. The kuliah is accountable for that, no longer the university. Right? And I think that's, that's, the, that's the, 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 the decision that the university has made uh, so that it becomes, quote unquote, uh, fair for, for, for everybody in that particular context. Now, now whether you want to stay at home or whether you want to come back, that's again your responsibility, not ours. If you think your house is adequate enough, you can do your study, you have no problems with it, you can stay home, that's okay with us. Yeah? But on the other hand, if you think it is not okay, then we need to support you. We will welcome you back so that you get the best of what you need, you need to decide. But if you think in a crowded house, uh, you know, with poor internet connection, you still, you think you, you want to stay home and, and, and make a good deal out of it, fine. So that we don't want to get, we don't want to receive the blame at the end of the day by saying, hey, the university do not offer anything. While I'm facing this sort of problem, the university just, you know, couldn't be bothered with me. No, we are interested in you, but if you decide otherwise, then it becomes your responsibility, no longer ours. Eh? If you say you want to come back and take whatever stuff and then go home, Fine. I mean, if, if the situation allows it, I think that that's okay with us. Yeah. So we are taking that flexible kind of a, a decision so that it fits into everybody's sort of a, a fancy, as it were, so that they can have the best of their decision that the university will then uh, support them as far as that is concerned. Now, there is, there is a concern here about, about the, whether we should start. I think there was one posting that say we do, should not care about you know, whether we want to start or not the semester, uh, you know. But the, the, the university, I am concerned that I don't want you, your bash becomes, if I were to make an analogy, if you talk about a season, uh, 2020 is a poor season. If you talk about growing fruits, uh, uh, the apple that is produced in year 2020 are bad apples. Because there's no closure, there's no monitoring, you know. And then later on, you will be facing the brunt of employment and probability. You say, oh, this student graduated from year 2020 from IIM. And these are the group that actually is not well managed. We don't want to employ them. You know, uh, because their studies are not well, uh, what do you call it, uh, structured and stuff like that. So actually, you are at this a disadvantage. I mean, certainly if you think that, uh, well, you should go on, don't care about the semester, it's fine by us, but then you have to pay the price. And I think the price is very high. So people say, oh, Batch 2020, I am, forget about them, they are, let's employ Batch 2019, let's employ Batch 2021. Batch 2020 is not a good crop. And I want to run away from that. And that's why we are trying still to make sure that you have the best, given a limited time, you have the best that there is that we can offer so that you are not discriminated, quote unquote, as the best that is actually not well uh, looked after as far as the university is concerned. That's only my concern, you know, so that we, we try to structure it as much as possible. And so far, I think uh, uh, the discussion, like what Amira said, is moving along that direction. And we have not made any decision yet. Uh, but we're waiting for the Kulia to respond. Kulia must tell the university 
that I've contacted 20 students out of the 20 students to his help, then Penn University provide help. Yeah, but we don't want to hear the Kulia say, oh, everybody 100% is okay and not giving us a good statistic where we actually can be accountable for. Uh, we are waiting for that feedback. Uh, hopefully by uh, this week, everything will come on board so that then we can say, well, we can start maybe 1st of June, maybe uh, second week of June or whatever. These are still uh, at, at a point of discussion, depending on the kind of data that we receive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is there any other uh, concern from either you, seems that you want to add something? Okay, let's see. There is another, there is another, another issue about the, they are concerned about how do you look after a mental health student. Uh, there was a before this. Uh, oh yeah. I'm worried how to cope up with weak students or needy students uh, who normally uh, coach them. Okay. Uh, my cursory, my very short answer to this, I think we should be beginning to see the students now as part of quote unquote the OKU students in a different sense. As much as we give so much support to OKU students, I think this group of students also needs to be looked after in that sense. The only difficulty is these students, we need to identify them. I mean, a mental health student or students who are prone to mental health uh, have a different way of, you know, you need to. You need, like, like the corona, you need to test them. And this is where I was telling this now, whether there's an app that we can actually tell who are the vulnerable groups that we can attend to them. Otherwise, there's no way of telling. I mean, I could be a mental health person. I talk too much. Uh, but, you know, uh, somebody needs to tell you, yeah, from this test, you are actually prone to mental health. And then we can take the student and look after them uh, the way we are looking after the other disabled, quote, unquote, or differently able student. That is still in the making. I think uh, uh, if I was mentoring to Dr. Mira, Teddy is supposed to do uh, <laughs> that kind of uh, app, and I hope we will see them very soon in this particular context. Yeah? OK. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Yes. Yeah. I, I actually, I rather have a question about mm -hmm. how the uh, accreditation works. Like, uh, if we change the way we conduct our teaching and learning sessions as well as our assessments, would it affect, like Tansi said, that uh, it, it might affect our generation of learning and earning our degree? So how would the ministry or whoever that give credits to our degrees would perceive this, the quality of our education if we continue with our semester? Like, did uh, MQA give any standards that we have to meet? I think whatever standards we have got before COVID mm -hmm. needs to be relooked. Mm. I mean, that, 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 that criteria is no longer applicable because the game has changed. Yeah. You know, if you're using the old, uh, the, the pre, I mean, you're talking about this normal and a new normal and old normal. Uh, you, you, you cannot judge uh, what has happened before on a kind of a new normal thing. So the whole thing needs to be revised so that, I don't know about MQA, but as far as the university is concerned, we have to redefine. Mm -hmm. For this group of people post-pandemic, what is education to us? Yes. We cannot use the same scale before and say, it's, not, it's grossly unfair on you, you know? So this is a big, this is a big, uh, a big assignment that we are undergoing. How do we define the education that you have gone through now, this period of the COVID, to say that this is still quality education, mm. and that's why we need to look into the nitty gritty of it, not just on the surface, uh, eight hours this, uh, three hours that, you know, uh, online this, uh, face to face that, because those are very superficial, but does not go into the depth of it. When you talk about education, you want to look at the depth of it, you know. Although you don't have eight hours, but do you have the depth? Uh, redefining in a different way, then you can be very clear that, well, the level of education they've got is almost, or if not equal, to what they've had before. That is the, that is the, 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 the most difficult part.
and that we need now to, to, to work to, to work on. Uh, otherwise, uh, like I say, you will be seen as a bad prop. Yeah. You know, and once that sinks into their mind, that's it. Yeah, sure. Uh, you, you, you probably postgraduate also is difficult to uh, to get into. Uh, so the the, the 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 price is very very heavy, and I think that's what we are trying to avoid at the moment in time to make it in such a way that you are still within that parameter of you know not not the unspoiled prop as well. I think we're still early in the stage. If we can salvage this, inshallah, we will do that. Sure. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Indayu. Okay, I think it's about time for us to hear anything from uh, any questions from staff. Is that okay? Now? Yes, by all means. Okay, so maybe anybody who would, any staff who would want to ask questions, if you can press the uh, hands up button, and then I will unmute your microphone. Okay, so we have one question from Sister Rosita. Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Tan Sri. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullah. Yeah, I'm I'm so happy to hear that you mentioned about the uh, persons with disabilities, our students with disabilities, uh, mm. because they 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 will be facing issues as well when we go uh, with this uh, e-learning online teaching, and um, I hope um, you know we can uh, coming up with the guidelines, we can also incorporate. Uh, you know the specific uh, guidelines uh, to cater for the needs of our students with disabilities. The various uh, disabilities. Some are with visual impairment. Some are with hearing impairments. Some are uh, autistic. So we are, you know, we we need to cater for uh, the specific needs in terms of preparing the teaching materials uh, and the like. So thank you very much for raising that. My my office uh, will be happy to to assist uh, in coming up with the guidelines for that. Yeah. Thank you. Please, I think you also need to work across the board now. People in the counselling uh, area, Noraini, and I think uh, uh, Lihana is also looking at this. The moment you can get together, uh, I think the faster you do, the, the easier it is for us. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I would yeah. like to request if uh, if my office can also be included in the discussion and uh, coming up with the uh, guidelines so that we can incorporate uh, the issues faced by the students with disabilities as well. Certainly, certainly. Yes. All right, thank you, Pantri. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there any other questions from the staff? Please raise your hand and then I will unmute your microphone. Okay, any other questions? All right. Dr. Maizir, do you want to ask questions? Okay, so I'm, I'm looking. Uh, actually, you can raise, you press the button of Raise hand and then, okay, let, let me just find where I'm in my okay. All right, go ahead, Doctor. Okay, Dr. Mois, you want to ask a question? Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I don't think we can hear you. Is your microphone on? Okay, we can't hear you. <laughs> okay, so perhaps you can, you can fix the microphone. Okay, maybe. All right, go ahead, go ahead. I, I try to adjust first, and then I can ask. Okay, all right. All right, sure, sure. Now I can hear you. you yeah, to... okay. No? Are you hearing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 <coughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Rabatan Karim, Tansri, and for all the uh, academy uh, staff. Uh, actually, we are very happy to hear from the Tansri said. And then what I want to say, I just say uh, one word that I still remember what I learned about this, uh, what we call the, the learning process that is Tansri mentioned, about the soul, you know? So if you want to learn, is a belajar, is a belajar. It's not maybe the academic, just only there is a one soul, there are the roh, must there the roh. So they, they think this, uh, the face-to-face -face is very important, I think. They, and then maybe not or the early learning can solve the problem, but maybe the early learning just one choice, maybe if you want to <coughs> learn something. And then maybe uh, if we want to look in terms of the teaching, the method that they want to uh, to give to the student, maybe uh, depend on the nature of the uh, you know the, the subject. I think let's say uh, maybe in terms of the the economy, maybe the law, or maybe compared to the engineering, maybe the uh, pharmacy or medical. And then we want to be practiced, and then the uh, what we learn, and then maybe need to practice. That's why maybe uh, uh, the, the the system method, the teaching learning. 
depend on the nature. I think for the others, uh, maybe that I want to say, in terms of the maybe the urban, the rural area, I think maybe we need to prepare the maybe the platform, maybe let's say maybe a teaching center, maybe close to the mosque, maybe the surau, maybe we can prepare the very high speed, maybe the speed uh, broadband, maybe and then they can go to surau, maybe and then from the surau they can learn, and then we my suggestion maybe we can put us the mosque, the surau, the center of learning. And then go back to the maybe the long time ago the practice. That's why maybe I just uh, uh, to quote what is the Tansri said just now. I think this uh, that very important is uh, the teaching. The most important is uh, the roh. The roh must be there. The face to face. And then without that, maybe I cannot. Maybe uh, the you know what we learn maybe cannot. Tabule masuk dalam hati from the heart. So I think that that's so Tansri. Thank you so much for your your your. You have given today, and then inshallah we can move forward. That Allah can be uh, maybe inshallah the our ummah become more strengthened for the future inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, thank you for the feedback, uh, Dr. Nasiruan. Okay, so is there any other questions? Perhaps we can address two more questions from the staff. We have students here. I think it's very rare opportunity that we have representative from ISU, which I think. Uh, should be the change agent in this difficult time. We, I believe on your role is very difficult this time, but it's very, uh, I think it's about time for us to synergize and then to, to come up with a better way in handling the situations because all this one seems that it has been uh, one conversation, one side of the conversation. Now we do have the, the opportunities to share our thoughts. And I think from the many discussions we had just now, since a lot of things are clearer now, okay? Uh, but if you want to have any questions from the staff that you would want to ask the students, I think it, it would be the best opportunities. Okay, now we have Dr. Maya. Okay, Dr. Maya, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Mira. Uh, and thank you to Tansri for your um, uh, input on this issue. I, I'm just worried that when we talk about um, uh, e learning as um, uh, a channel which is just temporary uh, we we will just relax on this uh, ignoring of forgetting that things are changing in any way artificial intelligence is coming in internet of things is coming in virtual reality is coming in uh, and uh, mm -hmm. saying that the students have to understand uh, the skills they need in the future which might be very near future, not very far future, uh, might not only depend on the technical uh, knowledge they gain from their, their study. Uh, they have to be prepared. Like this kind of situation is a very good exercise to learn how to adapt. And that is what is actually um, expected from, uh, from uh, the em employees in the, in the future. They, they, they need to adapt. Uh, uh, the word is now we, we say the word is changing we don't know how it will really change after this COVID-19 uh, uh, but um, as we have seen going into um, globalization uh, having international market and technology coming in all this definitely uh, will require the students to be more versatile uh, more adaptable and more open-minded to all these changes and I don't want to say that uh, we don't want to complain, but it, it will be very hard for, for anyone to find a job if they just complain, if they can't show their capability to transform themselves and move in with the changes that are taking place. So e-learning might not be a 100% uh, uh, way of going, going uh, in the future, but of course we need all these face-to-face um, uh, -face, uh, to learn from the person, uh, but as things are moving forward, probably we need to find alternatives on how we can have this mentor around and not around. You, you know what I mean? The mentor is, is there to learn from them and to, to learn from the character, from the way they speak, from the, the way they think, but they might not be really a prison with us. That can, might be a way uh, things moving in the, in the future and uh, we might not be able to escape from, from that fact. We just uh, need to be a kind of, um, uh, I, I'm, and this probably goes more to the students that we have to be 
more ready for changes to be taking place and we are ready to face these changes. Uh, otherwise, we will left behind. Uh, that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Roman. So it's okay. So the one I have highlighted another uh, interesting point, an important point. So maybe the student, uh, sister, Elayot, or brother Amin, uh, brother Amin, sorry, would want to comment on that, on how to adapt and adopt. Yeah. Um, previously, Dr. Man mentioned about. Uh, the fact that our future generation would have to face this. It's not new that we are expecting IR4 and how can we like incorporate this elements in our studies in the future as well as I remember uh, one previous policymaker who was a, the former Minister of Education he said about how the future of education is that we use big data to learn about students' personality and from this data and information that we can direct them better to in choosing their courses, et cetera, in knowing what are their styles of learning. And I think that's big. So that is why we have to, I believe that perhaps we can combine the experts from ICT, from our technology department, as well as from education department to incorporate how can we find the middle point of actually delivering the real purpose of education at the same time incorporating these elements of the technology so that uh, we can serve our ed education better. In fact, one of the chapters in the uh, uh, FPK book mentioned about this. Um, I would also want to add and perhaps listen from uh, Tansri about uh, these matters that we yeah, we want to occupy IR4, but at the same time, when we look at our, our grassroots reality, that we need more help. In fact, I believe it's about actions from the ministry and their telecommunications provider, whatever plans they have, to make internet for all a, a reality. Because even we are living near Kuala Lumpur, there are still people who do not have a basic access to this, and it's very staggering. So that there will be all from me, maybe the administration or Tansu wants to add anything? I'm not a technology guy, so I, I'm always very skeptical about technology because it takes away your uh, concentration uh, by looking at technology as something which is avant-garde, which is modern, which is attractive, you know. It's almost, in a way, malalaikan lah. Uh, I'm sorry if that's a word that I use. Uh, you, you get into it, and then somehow or other you lose the purpose of what technology is all about. I often, I often give this study uh, that, that was done uh, maybe six or eight months ago uh, about uh, digital lifestyle. It was done of uh, 10 country studies. Yeah? Uh, so happened that the two countries, which is not uh, uh, developed countries, were Malaysia and India. The rest are all Europe, US, uh, East Asia and stuff like that. Yeah. And the question they ask basically this, uh, how many of them, the respondents, uh, are not able, able to leave uh, without looking at their device in a day? Right? So the global response say 48% are not able to leave without looking at the device even in a day. It's 48%. 48 uh, but the Malaysian sample is 70%. 70% of Malaysians are not able to leave without looking at a device in a day. When you look at countries like Germany, it's 30%. Uh, uh, Japan, 20%. You know? My issue is basically how come a country which is technologically advanced are not obsessed with their, with their device? How come a country like Malaysia is... India is 68%, uh, almost as bad as Malaysia, and 70%. How come a country which is technologically not advanced are obsessed over this until 70% of you cannot leave without looking at that device in a day? And there's something wrong uh, with our understanding of technology. Now, when you ask the Japanese, uh, why do they do this? And their analogy is very simple. They say, this technology is like a toilet. If I want to use the toilet, I go to the toilet, I do my business and I walk out. Yeah? But for Malaysia, they live in the toilet. 
70% of their time, they live in the toilet, whether they like it or not. You know, that's the kind of analogy I've got. Now, what is it that attracts us to the toilet? And that's a part which I don't understand. How, we are, how come we are so obsessed over this? If you say you use this 70% of the time, using it in, in, in the most appropriate, optimal way, I'm probably happy. But I don't think so. Yeah, the research that we do here uh, shows to us that you know, 50% of you actually squandered your time uh, on on this on, the, on these devices. So my issue is basically when before you talk about this adaptability, do we understand what this technology is all about? And plus, when I read some of the the issues, some of the get some of the softwares, the algorithm uh, that will make. Uh, uh, similar to the casino kind of uh, algorithm. Yeah, they are meant to, uh, you know, to, 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 to keep you, to, to sometimes be, make you addicted to this, to this uh, system. Uh, this is the part we have, think we have not addressed. Some um, people at ITD may want to address this. Do we understand what this technology is all about? Or is it another way of distracting us from the meaningful life that we are supposed to do? You know? So uh, that's a question that is not, un uh, it's not answered for me when you talk about adaptability and stuff like that. Are we adapting? I think we, we are not adapting well uh, if this is the kind of data that we get uh, from, from surveys of this nature. So we, more, we, want, we, want, we, want, we will want to go back to the basic that these devices are supplement to our life. After doing this and I can't get it, then I go to this. But that is not my first option. Yeah? Uh, there are other options that we want, we want to look at. I mean, certainly we can debate about it, but my issue is that whether we understand this technology. I mean, I remember the prophet say, you know, if you don't, if you don't know what you're doing, at the end of the day, you go into the lizard hole. To me, this technology is a new lizard hole for us. Half of us have probably gone in and probably will not know how to come out because we have got addicted to it and so on and so forth. So that is a bigger issue that uh, I think we have not, we have not, uh, in, in, in understanding of what IT, uh, IT is all about, what it means to us. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, so that's very good, uh, very important, very important advice, especially for me in my field. Uh, ICT, which is, uh, Amir is also doing ICT, so it's a very important advice for all of us that actually in the domain of technology, to take into account on how especially to use education to make uh, more meaningful use of technology, um, which I, in, in many ways, it has, it has. Uh, but the fact that many actually got uh, carried away or hooked by technology, uh, that also another issue is that perhaps us as a technologists should also uh, onboard to find a solution. Okay, uh, so I think we only have three more minutes. Uh, I would I would like to allow students, because this session is about students, I would like to allow the students to raise any additional points that perhaps we should, as an educator, take into account before we embark the online learning, again, back to online learning. Uh, so is there anything that you would want to uh, highlight before we end the session? Especially Daniel, I think I would want to hear from you on the training part. Is there anything that you would want us to help? Uh, can I speak? Sure, yes. sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I think from our discussion, uh, what I can summarize is uh, the first one is in terms of the kulia. Uh, we know that uh, kulia needs is different and is very unique, and uh, we are approaching to first June. But yet, uh, I would say that um, uh, students are not yet being uh, briefed and explained on the uh, specific mechanisms on how the Kulia wants to conduct the uh, ERKL procedure. So I think uh, this process uh, should be fasting mm -hmm. for the students uh, to prepare themselves because uh, we are approaching to first June. And secondly, um, uh, in regards to Dr. Ma'an's uh, Ma uh, comment on the globalizations, uh, without prejudice, uh, it is undoubtedly that uh, students, especially the future graduates, uh, need to Require uh, this uh, sorts of uh, e-learning and also uh, internet uh, skills, but uh, we have 
to also consider that the grassroots realities, especially from our uh, conducted surveys, uh, really shows that uh, we are uh, not uh, or even yet ready uh, for this uh, full implementation of e-learning. Uh, nonetheless, uh, this uh, issue also ah. is not only about the students' readiness, but also in terms of the lecturers and also academicians' readiness. Uh, from the students' uh, point of view, uh, we have also been experiencing that uh, some of the lecturers are still maintaining the uh, mechanism of pen and pencil uh, assessments in terms on paper, and some and some of them also are not even uh, accessed into uh, ITAKLIM. So this is some sort of the very essence uh, learning uh, in terms of the uh, e-learning. So uh, it, it has to be, like I mentioned earlier, it has to be a collaborative effort. It has to be between students, uh, management, and also the lecturers. Everyone has to be ready uh, in terms of this. And uh, I would like to suggest uh, if we want to um, really uh, prepare the graduates for the globalization and also the, uh, to acquire the uh, internet skills, we can, the IIM management can offer like a compulsory university level course uh, in terms of internet and also e-learning for all students uh, in the future uh, semesters or future academic years. So we can uh, truly start from scratch in terms of uh, empowering uh, the e-learning uh, in IUM because uh, the question now, like we know that this pandemic, this pandemic suddenly popping out without everyone planning it. So uh, it's not only about the uh, enhancing the effective effectiveness of online learning, but in terms of IUM, it's in terms of the implementing on how to put it uh, on the very purpose and at first place. And then uh, number three is uh, on the uh, students' academic welfare. Uh, we have to consider in terms of the uh, attendance and also in terms of the uh, grading system uh, of the students because uh, the Office of Education, uh, IIM Student Union, we have received uh, several uh, reports. Uh, I'm sorry to disclose this, but uh, some of the lecturers also uh, asking students to conduct a class before the first June and asking for submissions before the first June. But uh, from IIM Student Union, we have uh, delivered and forwarded uh, these uh, cases to the Kuliah Bay Societies in order to uh, deal with the lecturer and also deal with the uh, Kuliah's uh, management ordinaries. So uh, it has to be a, a mutual understanding in which uh, lecturers have to uh, understand that uh, students are facing different uh, circumstances and difficulties uh, at their home and at their place. And then uh, lastly is on the uh, grading, grading system. Uh, this one, uh, I'm not very sure, but uh, some of the suggestions also from the students like, um, since these students have different circumstances at home, so uh, we really worry about how well they are prepared and how well they are commit uh, to their uh, online classes. So maybe uh, the readjustment of the uh, grades are needed uh, for the uh, assessment of the students especially and specifically for this uh, time of the uh, pandemic. And uh, regarding the attendance also, uh, we really um, uh, asking and requesting uh, the lecturers in order to uh, find uh, the uh, more suitable and uh, less strict mechanisms uh, in terms of taking uh, student attendance. And I would like to suggest like maybe in this time of the ERTL uh, period during uh, this semester, we can halt uh, the issuance of uh, any uh, barring or uh, warning letters to uh, students. Yeah, I think that's all from uh, what I can say from the Office of Education, uh, IOM Student Union. Thank you, thank you, Rebania. Uh, we have discussed some of those points, that's right. Uh, mm -hmm. And then um, we have, uh, we have agreed that there will be a guidelines prepared by multiple, uh, several offices. Uh, I believe KCA, Ahmad, and CPD, as well as some other offices, CPS, is currently working on that guidelines. Uh, I have to highlight, I think, uh, just for your uh, information, for the students' union information, we have been carrying out, I think I have highlighted earlier, we have carried out a number of trainings, and this is what I've perhaps would like to highlight. Uh, we have carried out exercise training uh, from, this is actually the second one that we have actually carried out. 
uh, <coughs> the, uh, the first one uh, which, uh, right before the MCO, and the second one, uh, which is nine sessions in a row, uh, these two weeks. Okay. Um, and we have also compiled, as I said earlier, we compiled um, a number of resources that uh, lecturers actually donated. Having all this before in place, I'm not going to say we're going to be mistake free, okay? But uh, ha that has to be, I think it, it needs to be uh, highlighted given to the students. I mean, you, as a student, I, I really request you to be, uh, I don't know how to put it, but on behalf of lecturers, I want you to, to understand as well the circumstances that we have. Many are actually learning for the first time. As you mentioned earlier, many, many is actually learning for the first time. So if there's any mistakes or if, there, if there's any uh, issues that you have in your class, um, it would be best to address to the lecturers first if that's working. If not, then maybe uh, to a relevant office in your career or if not, if it's related to e-learning, perhaps you can voice that to my office, you can channel that to, to my office instead of going like it viral. Okay, so put some room for both lecturers and students to make mistakes. It is not a comfortable situation. It is not uh, an easy situation to deal with. But without working together, it is impossible for us to pass this unprecedented event, unprecedented uh, circumstances. Okay, so I think I uh, will end the session. Uh, I want to keep my uh, promise that we're going to have this for one half yeah. hours, but uh, just before we end the session, I'm, uh, I would like to thank uh, all the participants who have been attending e learning clinic, and I would like to thank uh, everyone who have donated the content uh, to Italian. So we've compiled. I have. I think today I have to. I have to be very uh, conscious with my words. It is not guideline because guideline will come with several of this. It is the compiled mini uh, open resource on uh, on online learning, which I've compiled in Italy. So all lecturers can actually subscribe to the course. You can uh, pick any resources that you you are interested on. Uh, it is all available in Italy. Uh, just make sure uh, you forward the request, uh, you put the request to uh, CP and we will register you to the relevant, to the, the course, the public course that we have, where all the materials are there. On top of that, I would like to request uh, students, I mean, like, uh, I ask you to perhaps compile any needs in regards to what kind of trainings online that you would want the students to have. And perhaps we can collaborate in terms of what kind of resources my office can help in, in helping you, uh, helping all of you get ready with the uh, online learning. It is not an ideal situation. It is not easy. I can tell you that. I can promise you that. But without trying, we will never know what we're actually capable of. Okay, so, and I need you, I need all of you to be on board, inshallah. Okay, so, uh, on behalf of me and my, on behalf of my office, the uh, learning unit in CPD, and I personally, would like to apologize for any shortcomings uh, throughout these nine sessions that we have uh, in e-learning clinic 2.0. Um, I know it is not uh, ideal that we carry out all of those trainings online, but to have almost 500, almost full, full session, 300 session, 300 participants full on each session, it's very, I feel very honored and humbled. <laughs> Um, <laughs> as we know, I'm very easy. Well done, Doctor. So, yeah, I need, I need all of you. Uh, be strong, be optimist. Uh, it, is not, it is not easy, but it is not impossible. So, I think we're trying our best. We're trying our best. If you help us, we can do, we can do better. I just want to address one question about CELCOM today. We are, we are talking to CELCOM. Yeah? Um, we also do want to, uh, uh, to, to be taken for a ride. So we are negotiating certain things with Telcom. Uh, there's also other plans that I, th I think the Kuman is also trying to get another consortium to do this. So we're looking at that. And then the other question that I want to comment about a student empowerment. I mean, you must be empowered. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's, there's no meaning to be a student without empowerment. 
So you must talk to your dean, you must make your voice heard, you must be telling them what you want. Then only we begin to understand where we are, where we are heading. If you're just keeping quiet and then viral it, so the world knows about it, but we here still do not solve our, solve our yes. problem. Then I think it doesn't mean it's very irresponsible to do that. Or yeah. rather you talk to us, forget about the viral thing, and let us you know, attend to your problem and you can solve it. Then we can tell the world, hey, we are leading the way. Now we are telling the world we are not doing what we are supposed to do, and we, it doesn't make any sense to us. So this is why I say the purpose of technology is to put our good. For viral, you do it very easily. For the good part, you didn't do it. If you viral, I would is the best in the world, I'm okay. But you, you always viral the worst about the university, and then hope the university to do better. So think about this, and I think we will do better, inshallah. I, I'm really very happy to talk to you. If there's any session we can have together, I'll be here, inshallah, no problem. Yeah? Yes. So thank you very much. All the best. Selamat berbuka. And make sure you post it tomorrow. Thank you very much for having us. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Thank you so much, Nancy. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.